Hi everybody, Ryan here again with Berserk Custom Paint and today what my video is going to cover is what I call training your brain to think like an artist. Now what do I mean by that? You all have sent me emails uh, asking my opinion about your artwork and one thing that I see that is a constant that a lot of you are doing is um, you're looking at you're looking at our interpretation, whether it be my videos or someone else's videos or somebody else's stencils or their step by steps, and you're looking at it as step one, step two, step three, step four, and you're not thinking of why are we taking these steps? You know, what went in, what went through our brain as an artist that told us to do this step and that step? So I feel like if I can teach you how to think in terms of of light and shadow and texture and shape and if, if I can train you train you guys to start thinking in, in those terms maybe you'll be able to better interpret what we're trying to explain in the steps that we take to do things you know whether it be me explaining how to do a black and white or a Katy Perry color or this Johnny Depp you know kind of sepia thing here all of it we're all thinking the same thing whether I you know whether I used an orange and black here I used black and white there I used a million different colors on that one it all comes down to the same basic artistic understanding of light shadow shape texture all those things so uh, so for the next this video and the next couple of videos I'm gonna not only explain what I'm doing but I'm explain why I'm doing it what my brain is thinking that is telling me to do this specific thing at this specific time. So uh, they're probably going to be a little more boring than my other videos, but I feel like if you watch them, uh, you'll come away from it probably a little bit of better artist. Uh, if you're a do-it-yourselfer and maybe you just want to do that cheap, easy trick, you know, you want to buy a stencil, you want to spray it on and in five minutes be done with it, at least you'll be able to interpret that one thing a little bit better if you understand what goes through an artist's mind or at least my mind as an artist and I feel like maybe a lot of other artists too so here we go so I'm gonna start with a gray color today in this video I'm using uh, the house of color when I was at Coast Airbrush they were nice enough to give me this uh, little bottle of well I've got uh, several bottles of this house of color bases uh, they also gave me some candies and a couple others um, a lot of you guys that you ask me what kind of paint do I use well I use stand ox normally but that's just because that's what I have available to me and it's a really good paint but if you're a do-it-yourselfer or if you don't have a, a big mixing bank available to you like I do then House of Color is probably the best one to go with um, I'm working on paper today so you could also use Createx um, but really get familiar if you're into custom custom paint get familiar with the House of Colors because uh, those are those are going to be really good for you. Um, I got this one at Coast Airbrush. Um, I'm told that they're the only ones that can sell them in these little bottles. So uh, if you want something like this, go to coastairbrush.com, and they'll help you out. So moving forward, what do I mean by basic shapes? Um, when I first see this skull, what I'm thinking is it's number one, a circle, a sphere, a ball, right here. This is the ball. Underneath that ball, we've got this rectangular shape, creating the bottom of the jaw. Now that's broken down, and I'll break it down right here, if you can see it. Into sizes. Now your circle is here. Right, and that creates the bottom of the teeth. Now your jaw comes down here. Here's your line for the bottom of the jaw. Now these are like measurements. Here's halfway, right there, that's the nose. Right in the middle of the nose is halfway through this entire piece as a whole. So I know that's probably hard to understand so let me just draw it for you. Like I said I'm working in gray. My reduction isn't as much as I like so I'm going to turn my air pressure up. And there's my circle here. And there's that. Now if you're buying a stencil to do the drawing for you, still remember there's a circle there. Now halfway, here's our hashes. There's halfway, there's that one and that one. One, two, three, four, five parts. Or actually one, two, three, four parts. 
Now we know that our nose is in the middle of it all. Now just because we're using an actual skull for reference, which I highly recommend, use actual skulls. Don't use somebody else's custom skull because then you're going to interpret his a little funky. Somebody else, and then you're going to interpret funky, funky until you get completely lost in it all. So remember what a real skull looks like before you go changing it around. That's a big thing. Now, custom skulls. Now you want it to look mean because you're painting on a motorcycle and they don't want a nice looking skull. So all you got to do is turn that brow up a little bit. Boom, boom. Now, I'm still using my normal skull for reference, but I just made him look a little meaner. Now, where do our teeth fall? Right at the bottom of that circle. That's where the middle of the teeth are. So let's draw us a line. And still, we're using such really basic shapes right now. I don't have the same technique as you see a lot of like t-shirt artists where they can just pop out these teeth like nobody's business. Well, I practice more with little fine details, so I have to take a little more time. So now my artwork isn't as intimidating, is it? Because, you know, I'm not as good with my airbrush as a lot of those guys are, yet I can still pull off these really cool pieces. Why? Because I understand art. So just because my skill level with the airbrush isn't up to par doesn't mean my artwork has to be. So don't be intimidated by the fact that some of these other artists, like one of the best I know, Jamie or Jaime Rodriguez, who I got to go meet, you saw in the other video, that guy has crazy, crazy control. Now you see, I, all I did was just, there's my basic form. I just filled in the teeth. Now the bottom, you'll notice in my reference, if you look, it goes up, down, and around. Up, down, and around. It's not just one. So I drew an outline of that basic shape, which is this one, this line here. So that gives me a starting point. Now I can see by where I put my teeth, and you see how big this jaw is, and you see how much, how much narrow of space I gave myself. I know now from where these teeth are that I should probably make my jaw a little bit bigger. There's a good guideline. I'm looking at my reference here and I know that my jaw should probably be around there. Now normally I can draw a skull right out of my head because I've drawn them that many times. It's probably thousands of skulls I've drawn. So that's why I can get away with drawing skulls out of my head. If you have never drawn if you have drawn under 50 skulls, don't be trying to draw them out of your head. Because you're going to make them look funky. Yeah, you can customize them all you want as an artist. But if you're customizing something you never had a solid understanding of to begin with, then you're just making chicken scratch. Now when you buy those stencils, this is what they're giving you right here. What I'm doing. Right now, I am finding out where my artwork is headed. I'm doing the work of those stencils. So if you don't feel like you can handle this step, buy the stencil, spray it on, and then follow from there. Now I'm getting a little bit off of my basic guideline, but that was there for. It was there to show me things. It's like a sculpture. Your image will find itself eventually. You just have to know how to make it. You know, like right there, I saw that his jaw was a little bit off. So I'm going to bring it down. Fix it a little bit. Boom. Basic, basic form. This is where we start from. Now, from here, I can go in and start filling in my details, deepening everything in, finding out where it's going. Normally I would probably start with a lighter gray, but I used a darker gray so you guys could see it on camera. Alright, our next step is going to be shading this thing. Like I said again, when you buy a stencil and you spray it down, this is basically what you got here. None of these lines that you're seeing right now are going to be in my final thing. Okay? Now looking at this reference, I'm not going to follow it exactly the same, but I'm going to remember, I'm going to, I'm going to pick a light source first of all. Here, our light is coming directly down. That's what's causing the shadow to fall here, 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 under his teeth. 
And I kind of like that. It's kind of a creepy light source. So, just for the sake of, the, of this tutorial, I'm going to draw a little arrow that says light coming from this direction. Okay? Now, if it was sitting on a table, that light coming down from this direction is going to hit this table and bounce off. So it's going to go bam, bam, that way. That's what you call a secondary light source created by the table. It could also be created by backlighting or several other things. So be conscious of that secondary light source. It's not as apparent in my reference, but I'm going to make it a little exaggerated in this one. So right now, I'm just blocking in where I think my shadows are going to fall. It's going to fall on the bottom side of this. Boom, there's my secondary light source falling inside here. On the top of his head, it's going to hit the broad spot. Let's say the high point of his head is right here. So all those shadows, boom, the highlight's going to be there on the top of his head. Also, there's going to be dark underneath his eyes. It's going to be darker here, and it's going to catch a highlight right there. So, I'm not going to fill it in solid. I'm going to start where the darkest part might be, which is up high. Because if the light's coming down here, boom, the shadow's going to fall directly under here, and it's going to fade out because the light's going to leak in in the bottom of that socket. Now, in normal skulls, you don't have this really dark brow. See? There's not a real heavy brow there. But... Since I want to mean him up a little bit, I'm going to make his brow just a little bit more prominent. Actually, a lot more prominent than in real life. Now, you'll notice it probably looks a little dark to you, but remember, we're using gray. We're like five shades away from black right now. So when I go to throw that black in there, we're going to be able to do a lot more then. Okay. So also, right here on the temple region going to cause a shadow down there. Why is that shadow there? Well, it's high here, which creates a shadow because it comes back in. It curves in. That's why that shadow is there. Now, like I said, I'm not following my reference exactly, but I'm keeping it close. Always keeping it close. That way, if I ever have something I don't know, my answer to my question, my cheat sheet is sitting right next to me. Alright, that's step two. What did we do in step two? We blocked out where our shadows were going to be, okay? So what our next step is going to be is taking our black and we're going we're gonna to better define the skull. All right, now we have black. As you can see, black is quite a bit darker than the gray that we started out with. What we're going to do is just like in that other skull video I made, we're going to start in our darkest areas first. Start in our darkest areas and work out. How do we know? We got our light source telling us telling us where our darkest areas are going to fall. The brows are high. The brows stick out. Think of it as a ball. These poke out of the ball. Your cheekbone right here. This is a high part. High point. On top of the nose here. That's a high point. Chin. High point. So, remember that. Now one thing I want to say is don't go too dark too fast because it is easier to darken something that's too light than it is to lighten something that's too dark. The deepest areas of the teeth, as you can see in my reference, you see the gaps here, 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 here. Let's draw those gaps first and then if we feel like we need to deepen it, you know, trace the teeth, then we can do that later. This is that electric eraser I mentioned in a previous video. Now what I'm doing, I'm hitting the high spots first. This is what's sharpening our picture up a little bit. It's not just light and shadow, it's light, shadow, highlights. 